Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. If you couldn't tell right away, today we're shooting outside. The reason for this is we're going to be taking a look at this power supply here, and because of its size and particularly its weight, I don't have a, a really good spot to be able to film this inside, so instead I have to do it outside. And unfortunately, I don't have control over the wildlife or car driving by, etc., so I apologize for any sound quality issues ahead of time. The power supply we'll be taking a look at is the Sorensen. Zoom in onto that. Too close. Uh, DCR86B. So this is an 80 volt, 6 amp supply. Like that. And I actually picked this thing up uh, dumpster diving, so I don't actually know if it works or not. Uh, the supply is a very basic, old-school, analog type supply. If we zoom in over here, we have our voltage coarse and fine adjustment and a DC volts meter. And then over here we have the current adjustment uh, coarse and fine. Uh, this is a basic lab supply, meaning that it's capable of doing a constant voltage or constant current and it can kick over between the two, back and forth between the two automatically depending on what the uh, load is demanding. This is exactly how I picked up the supply out of the garbage with the wires cut off this way. From my understanding the wires being cut off like this are a good sign. Reason being uh, when something is disassembled and you want to disassemble it rapidly but you don't care about it being reassembled later you cut the wires off like this because you know you don't want to take the time to take the cover off unscrew them etc uh, this signifies that chances are that the supply came out of something that was functional uh, the other case being that if you took the supply out of something that you want to reassemble later and you took the supply out because let's say it was faulty or whatnot you would actually take the time to take the cover off and uh, remove the wires because when you get a new supply you want to be able to uh, reattach it so you wouldn't cut the wires off this way. Uh, before we have a look inside we have to take care of some uh, bookkeeping stuff if you want to call it that and that is we need to pop this cover off and look at the wiring uh, on the inside. Uh, I was able to find a full service manual for this power supply and I will uh, link that in uh, down below but uh, this power supply is capable of being programmed externally which it looks like at least two of these wires go to the programming lines one for current one for voltage and uh, the uh, power supply is also capable of uh, remote sense lines so the third wire down here is probably for the remote sense line for us to be able to use it as a uh, benchtop power supply, we're gonna have to uh, redo the wiring in the back here to accommodate uh, local sensing and uh, programming of the current and voltage on the uh, front panel. Let's go ahead and pop off the panel and see what we have going on inside. Like that. So as I thought, what we see inside here is these two red wires are the power outputs, the main power outputs, and you probably can't see it from here, uh, plus, oh, it'll stray zip tie, uh, plus, minus, and G and G are labeled here. Uh, these two wires look like they're from the negative sense. This wire is the positive sense, and then both of those uh, sense lines are broken off over here. And then both of these lines, uh, what is that? Let's see here. Eight and nine. I do believe that is the current adjust. So let's go ahead and uh, pop all these out. Uh, we will have to install uh, jumpers here, which it looks like the jumpers were uh, eliminated by the uh, previous user. And uh, 
we're gonna have to attach the sense lines from here down to here to make sure that the unit has local sensing. So as you can see, now I've gone and I've removed the uh, extra wiring that was in here. And I've installed the uh, other two jumpers that were missing besides this one. And you can see this one here is a nice metal jumper where it fits really nicely between the two but because they were removed i had to use the wiring that was uh, already in here to give me my jumpers something that i wanted to uh, make note of is if you don't have these kind of nice ring terminals to put under these kind you know the, the screw lugs uh, the way to put a wire under a screw lug is you have to uh, twist it on in the same direction as the screw turn so i wanted to demonstrate that so i left this wire disconnected so if we kind of measure the length of that wire like that we need it to be about that long let me go ahead and clip that off and i want to Go ahead and strip the wire off like that so we have the uh, bare wire here the wires already kind of nicely twisted and what i'm going to do is uh you know lefty loosey righty tighty so the screw as it screws in will turn uh, clockwise so i want to take the wire and i want to put a, a loop on it in the clockwise direction so now i can uh, sneak that guy underneath that lug and as I tighten it down, the screw will actually pull the lug in, making it tighter. You can kind of see that the, the wire got pulled in a little bit. And that's the proper way to put a bare wire underneath one of these lugs. So now that, we've had, now that we have the uh, screws and wiring here taken care of, let's go ahead and pop off the top and take a peek inside. Now that we've got it open, let's take a quick tour of the inside. This guy here is the main transformer. And originally when I picked this power supply out of the trash, I thought that this was a linear supply due to the very large transformer because this is a 500 uh, watt power supply. It's a very beefy transformer. But uh, once I found the schematics and checked them out, this is not a uh, linear supply this is a phase angle or phase fired controlled supply. The way this supply works is that it uses a triac, which is the device mounted here uh, on the uh, heatsink, to control or uh, to chop up the waveform to uh, the transformer. And then from the transformer, that power is rectified. The uh, diodes are here here and here they're actually using the chassis here as a heatsink and then finally the output power is filtered with a capacitor and this inductor over here and then output through either the front panel or through the rear panel with which we looked at before the simplicity of the supply is you know pretty apparent we only have a few major components and all of the real control circuitry is contained over here on the uh, main circuit board. The circuit board is responsible for uh, firing the uh, triac. It's responsible for the voltage and current sensing and for automatically switching uh, between the two modes. Before we proceed, we have to do a bit of bookkeeping and that is I'm gonna use uh, this meter here to verify that the connections uh, here in the back are also the same connections here in the front. There we go, that's the positive. And then that's the negative. Another thing we should probably check is the fuse. And the fuse is located right here. There we go, and the fuse is also good, so this bodes well for the supply being uh, functional. Now that we've gotten the pleasantry, so to speak, out of the way, we've taken a look at the inside here of the supply, we want to turn it on. But how do you turn something on like this? Uh, you don't just throw the switch, per se, because you don't know, you know if there's something wrong with the supply, etc., and you could have a catastrophic failure. So when you have an unknown element, you always want to bring it up slow. 
Uh, as I've uh, sort of demonstrated with the uh, uh, Amazon bot supply, the PowerTech, maybe that's what it was called. Uh, previously, you have the ability to slowly turn up the uh, output voltage and you can set a current limit. And so if your circuit happens to catastrophically malfunction, you can mitigate uh, some of the damage or even possibly catch it before it's fully damaged. But how do you plug some, or how do you bring up something slow that plugs into the wall like this supply? To bring up something slow that plugs into the wall, you can use a device like this. It's called a Variac. What this is effectively is a, a variable transformer. If you look at the top here, you have this big knob and you rotate the knob to give you from effectively zero output to this actually possibly boosts the voltage slightly. So if we have 120 coming out of the wall, this will take you up to 130. But that really depends on how the Variac is wound. Uh, the other nice things about a Variac is a Variac ends up being a very large inductor. So if you, uh, whatever you're plugging into this has a very high inrush, this will uh, choke it down to some extent. It's not perfect, but it will reduce it. It also has an on off switch on it and it has a nice little uh, voltage readout. So you can actually, if, if I turn this on, I can spin the knob up and you can see that the voltage on the uh, display is going up. At least I hope you can see that because it's kind of hard to tell from this angle. And it's also fused at 20 amps, which the supply couldn't possibly draw 20 amps unless there's a catastrophic failure. And then the fuse will protect us. So now I've loosely placed the uh, top cover on so I can show you both the uh, Variac and power supply at the same time. And what we're going to do is first we're going to bring it up slow with the power turned off. At least I'm pretty sure it's turned off in the uh, bottom direction here. And we're going to watch this voltage gauge closely to see that it actually sweeps all the way up to a uh, full scale voltage. Because we don't have a current sensor uh, anywhere in line to be able to show us how much current that this supply is actually drawing. So if the voltage, we're not able to bring the voltage up and the voltage tanks or something like that, that'll give us a clue that something is wrong with the supply. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on the uh, Variac, which I have the Variac plugged into uh, the wall and then the supply is plugged into the Variac and then we're going to slowly bring it up and it looks like the voltage gauge is climbing like it's supposed to be like that and that'll bring us up to about 120 volts like that and everything seems to be hunky-dory so far so let's go ahead and lower it back down and let's go ahead and turn on the supply like that and what we're looking for we're looking for is for that uh, power LED to eliminate and again we're watching the volts here so let's go ahead and bring it up I don't know if you just saw but the uh, DC volts here uh, gauge is starting to kind of flicker which might be because this doesn't yet have enough power actually probably now that I think about it the voltage is actually probably turned up so let me Try and turn the voltage down. There we go, the power light is on here. And we, it's probably hard to tell, but we seem to be in constant voltage mode. Oh, I see the, let me, let me move that out of the way like that. The knob actually, does it or doesn't it? I can't tell. I think what the problem, the, the potentiometers might be a little dorked. There we go, all the way to the left here. Our DC volts are falling, falling, and that's pretty much what we would expect. And of course we're not in constant current mode, so it looks like the supply came up correctly. Let's see if we can uh, cause the DC volts to go up again. There we go. 
20, 40, 80. And back down we go. So it appears that the supply powered up okay. Let me go ahead and pop off the Variac and we'll do some stuff with uh, measuring some of its outputs. So now I have the supply turned off. I have my voltmeter here. It's not that e the display isn't that easily seen, but you can sort of see it. <laughs> I have the meter set to DC volts and uh, let's go ahead and turn her on. Throw the switch. The power light came on, okay. And our output is low. So now let's go ahead and turn it up some. Like that, that's about 11 volts, which seems uh, uh, at least roughly right, according to the gauge here versus the meter here. Let's take it all the way to 80. Well, I guess to, to max out, but so this will actually go to 84 volts. That looks great. Like that. And uh, while I was hooking this up, what I did notice is that I don't, I didn't particularly like is that the banana jacks here are very shallow. They don't go in very far. It feels kind of blah. All right, now let's see if we can check the current capability. Let me go ahead and turn the current all the way down like that. And what I want to do is switch this to DC amps and move this jack over here. So what we're going to effectively do is we're going to short circuit the uh, output of this uh, supply and we should see it go from uh, constant voltage to constant current, which actually I think it's in constant current mode right now. But we're going to see what the current output here is on the meter. It is kind of hard to read this because the display's kind of faded. But let's uh, give her a whirl. So if I turn up the voltage some, it looks like we're already in uh, constant current mode because this light's illuminated. It's, it's kind of hard to see in sunlight, sorry. But uh, let me switch over to the other side here. And so now we'll be able to slowly turn up the current. And we're definitely in constant current mode. So the gauge here is showing us an amp and a half. And that's about what we're seeing on the meter here, an amp and a half. So now we're about four amps like that and we're seeing about four amps so that looks good and you can really hear this thing hum and let's go balls to the wall the full six amps which seven amps just looks like is the max for this supply there we go so the supply looks like it's fully functional. Awesome. Now something I want to note and be very specific about is that well, the test that we did of bringing up the voltage and then bringing up the current, while they do show you that the supply is working and the metering is functional, the true test of a supply like this is to be able to output full power, meaning uh, the supply is a 500 watt supply and we would have, we would need a load that could accept the full 500 watts, you know, 80, uh, uh, what, 85 volts and 7 amps that the supply is roughly capable of and that is just something I do not own. So while uh, the supply appears to be functional and it probably is you know we we can't be 100 percent sure we're only like 99 percent sure that the supply is fully working as i said previously i apologize that i had to shoot this outside that you know that you can you just heard the car drive by you know i don't have a lot of control over the environment so there is probably going to be some ambient noise and I, I did the best that I could. Uh, 
if you have any questions uh, or comments, you're always welcome to uh, put them here down below. And uh, bonus points for anyone that was paying attention. I did shoot this video over a few days and the temperature has changed drastically. So if you watch carefully, you can actually tell uh, that I'm wearing different clothes in the different shots. Let's see if you can tell whether the temperature went up or the temperature went down. Thank you for watching.